remember that stiffness. What is more naturalistic? So they have that contrapposto. It's figurative, meaning you have statues of people. It's the ideal of beauty, and it's humanistic. That is definitely Greek. You see humanism, boom, Greek. You associate the two. What is geometric, architectural, and religious? Early Christian. It, it was the Romans that did it, but the Roman style of art is this one. It's complex, figurative, classical influence, meaning Greek influence, and military. They, they do pictures of generals and emperors, and they build these arches. Um, so you have this one here is early Christian or Byzantine. Byzantium was the Eastern Roman Empire, and Constantine was the one who moved it. It was called Byzantium. Huh? Last one is Roman. So what kind is that? Egyptian. Egyptian. What are the characteristics? Stiff. Stiff. Afterlife. Afterlife. Funerary. Figurative. What are the two types of Greek art? Non humanistic. Hellenistic. They're all humanistic after this. Hellenistic and what? Classical, which is which? Which one is this? And what's the difference? What are the characteristics of Hellenistic art? It's more dramatic. It's highly textural, it's very dramatic, and it's complicated. It's very hard to engineer this. This is very simple in comparison. One word you have to remember when you see this, arch. Romans are credited with utilizing the arch. What is this? I can't really see the most blurry. It is blurry. A Byzantine mosaic. The Byzantine mosaic is geometric because it's made out of little square tiles. So it's like a pixel. It is, it tells the gospel. So it's providing a narrative, but it's not a window. We're not there yet. It's also attenuated, meaning they stretch out the figures and they're very symmetrical looking. So they have, you know, they don't do them in a three-quarter profile or a half profile. They always do them like straight on with two, two eyes on either side and they look the same, like they're mirror images. So it's symmetrical, it's geometric, religious iconography or subject matter. What is this? Hagia Sophia. Where is this? Turkey. Turkey, specifically in? Istanbul. Okay, so this is in Istanbul. Now, I was reviewing your final this morning, and I was looking at it, and I was asking you, what kind of structure this is? What are you going to answer to that? What kind of structure is this? Not, because it's Romanesque, but you don't have to know that. What was it built as? <laughs> yes, a church, yes. But what kind of church? Is it a Gothic cathedral? No. Is it, or was it, at the time it was Mosque. It's a mosque now, but it wasn't built as a mosque. So it wasn't built as a mosque, and it wasn't built as a Gothic cathedral. That's something different. But this was the first Christian church or the first Christian cathedral. <coughs> Not Gothic. Look at those arches. Look at those domes. That's a Roman, Romanesque. What is this? <coughs> It is rings name, but what does that mean? What is rings? I mean, what is this? Look at the high ceilings. Look at the rose window. What is that? Well, yes, a Gothic cathedral. A Gothic cathedral. So tell me five things about Gothic cathedrals. 
about the fire chiefs? No. Well, that's true, but that's not one of the five major. What keeps it up structurally? Buttress, the flying buttresses. There, there's braces on the outside of the walls are what keep those walls up. Flying buttress, that's first one. What's this? Uh, it is a stained glass, but this is a really specific one. That's the rose window, which is a tribute to the Virgin Mary. So rose min window, tribute to the Virgin Mary. These are the stained glass windows, and what do they do? They tell the story. That's a that's a gospel, a narrative of the gospel. So you have to know that. How is this built? What is the floor plan of a Gothic cathedral? Cross. Yes, it's built in the shape of a cross, so cruciform. And then the statues outside. What kind of statues are those? Really sweet face with the prayer and the halo and like peaceful, beautiful, meditative faces. Those are called Carolinian, spelled C-A-R-O-L-I-N-G-I-A-N. And actually, it's from the name Charles, Charlemagne, Carolinian. So if you know anybody named Carol, which it's not a popular name in your generation, but if you do, that's derivative of Charles, as is Carla, Charles. Yeah, Charles. Okay, purpose of the stained glass window, once again. Tell a story, narrative of the gospel, very good. And then this slide is also used to refer to this structure, which is known as Rosemont window, and the purpose is to honor Mary. What's wrong with this picture? And what is the era? Early Renaissance, very good. I should just let you not take the test. Yeah, that's on yeah, yeah. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're out of luck. She's the one answering all the questions. Okay, so what's wrong? The fake color. Huh? So, yeah, the, the people are not grounded here. They're all kind of floating up there. Sort of like production of Peter Pan where everybody's on wires. At floating figures, what else? What's wrong with this picture? Did this, when they first started doing these, the, what were they looking at? They were looking at these mosaics. And so when you look at these faces, they look a lot like those mosaics. But guess what? They don't have to, because when you're using a brush and paint, you can have a lot more detail and a lot more fluidity than with those tiles. So the faces aren't natural. What about this? What does this show you? Because if you trace these lines back, they're not going to make sense. There's no vanishing point. So what's wrong with this? Is that what's taking it? Huh? Is that what's taking it? Well, yeah, but why? What's off about it? What's he trying to do that's not quite getting there? He's trying to make it look further away. <laughs> yes, he is. He is trying to make it look further away, but what device is he trying to use that he's not getting right? Linear perspective. Single point linear perspective. He's not getting it right. Because if you trace these lines back, they would go all over every which way. They don't go back to one point, which is that vanishing point. So the linear perspective is off. The figures are floating. What else? The faces are not naturalistic looking, which we've discussed. Two more things. Huh? Scale is way off. So these people are way too big for what the background looks like. This looks like somebody put together a, a collage. So the scale is off. One more thing. That is the modeling. Same here. This looks like those Byzantine mosaics. It looks very compressed and crisp and flat. 
All of those problems are fixed in this picture. What is this picture? Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. What kind of painting is it? Fresco, very good. It's on plaster, it's a fresco. It's the first painting of what? Now, are you guys gonna know this? Because she's answering every single question. Well, she's not letting us an opportunity. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Let our hunters answer it. I can see him champing at the bit. Yeah, he doesn't look at all confused. Okay, so. High Renaissance. Who are the three main artists of the High Renaissance? Michelangelo, Raphael, and who? Leonardo. Yeah. So one of the other Ninja Turtles is way back in the early Renaissance. So early Renaissance is this with all kinds of things that need to be followed up on. This, though, is the first painting of the High Renaissance. It's by one of the big three of the Renaissance, who are Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. The linear perspective is perfect. The modeling is perfect. The drapery, the naturalism is perfect. The figures are rooted in the ground. I'm going to show you, because this is definitely going to be on the final, I'm going to show you a reworked version of it after it's been restored. What kind of iconography is this? You have two kinds of iconography in Western art. What do you have? Religious and secular. Most secular. This is definitely secular. Where did he get the iconography from? Greek. What does Renaissance mean? Rebirth. Rebirth. Naissance. Ne is like neonatal. Natal. So Renaissance means rebirth. What are they rebirthing? Well, the, the classics. The classics. So you need to remember that because it's very important and they stray away from the religious iconography. What is this? Ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. This is the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Who's the artist? Michelangelo. Now, why isn't this a typical Michelangelo piece? There you go. He's a sculptor. If you see this, you need to know it's not typical of his work because it's not a sculpture. You also need to know that this man, Michelangelo, was the inspiration for another style. Note how Michelangelo takes the body and all the light areas here and surrounds it with darkness. So he's creating contrast in there and how he just almost lays everything down. Look at the really deep diagonal that he's got in there. That's very far from horizontal and vertical grid like, like Leonardo uses. So he's going to spawn another movement. And that movement is called what? Mannerism. And in mannerism, they're going to start really being sensitive to lights and darks and amp up the volume. They're going to be really dramatic like Michelangelo was dramatic. In fact, they're going to be even more dramatic than Michelangelo. And they're going to be complex. Because compared to Leonardo, look at this. All this texture in the background, and these are actually people in the shadows or angels or whatever. But I mean, he's got a lot of complexity. The thing almost dances. So this is the style, mannerism. What are the characteristics of mannerism? I just told you. Light, light, and dark, dark. Yes, which is called chiaroscuro. What else? Think the stage. It's like everybody's on stage. very dramatic, and it's very complex. I mean, you cannot get much more
more dramatic than a severed head on the ground or somebody being crucified. That's real high drama. What is the iconography and mannerism? Religious. Very good. Who said that? Good job. Good job. No, you're fine. See? You weren't answering. I was, I was trying to like uh -huh. soak it in. Process. Soak it yeah. in. Process. I get it. Yeah. I get it. So the device used to create space and drama is chiaroscuro. The style is mannerism, and who influenced it? Michelangelo. Any of those questions could come up with either of these slides. This does not look like what his later work would look like. So who is it? Huh? That's not Raphael. Albrecht Durer. And Albrecht Durer is from where? Northern, Northern European. So Durer is Northern European, but he studied in Italy. That's why this looks Italian. What's Italian about it? Yes, the palette is really warm. It's got a lot of warm colors to it. And it there's, it's like there's a layer of seal fat in all of these female faces of the Italian, you know, of the, the Italian painting of that era. So this is Albrecht Durer, and he is the Northern European Renaissance. He's the only person that we saw. It would either be this or that, the one in your book of Adam and Eve, the etching of that, or the engraving of Adam and Eve, or it would be the one where St. Bartholomew is sitting in the pot of oil getting his butt burnt, and he's like praying and not emoting at all. Those are all Albrecht Durer, D-U-R-E-R. -E and the E before, in between the two R's has an umlaut over it. What kind of painting is this? Northern European. A Northern European, you can tell because of two things. What are they? Cool colors. Cool colors, they're very good, excellent. Cool colors and? The windmill, which is iconographic. It's, the, it's a Northern European icon, it's Dutch. Now, there's a, there is a religious element to this. Even though it's secular iconography, there's a religious element to it. Why do Northern Europeans think that this has religious iconography? I mean, religious overtones. Because of the clouds? Yes. So what are they saying here? Because the Italians, they're doing all kinds of stuff from the Bible, and it's high drama from the, the Bible is really dramatic. If you've ever read it, it's like, oh my God. So what's godly about this? about these clouds. It's like the sense of light and reflection, but what kind of belief system does that reflect? Yes, there you have it. That is that is the influence right there, Protestantism. So if you see this one or this one, you need to know that the influence is Protestant, Protestant thought or Protestantism and these are both Northern European. You can tell, boom, immediately by the palette. It's a cold palette in comparison. See how much simpler and plain. I mean, when they go back to neoclassical, stuff is going to look like this again. The Italians are just, you know, very emotional, and they've got a lot of flourishes, and it's very busy. This is not. This is simple and clean. We're gonna hop on over to Louis the Sixteenth, and what style is this? Yes, and we usually, because this is actually Baroque and this is Rococo, but they lump them in, so it, I may say Baroque Rococo. It doesn't look very Baroque; it looks Rococo. What are the characteristics of this? This vinyl is not easy, guys, so you should be taking notes if you're not getting all this. What are the characteristics of the Rococo style? The, the iconography or the imagery is sexualized. It's highly sexual. It's 
like this is like a bunch of naked nymphs. Anything else? Think of Louis XIV in this court. It's very decadent. It's frivolous. It's well crafted, but it has no substance or very little substance. This is not about any kind of strong belief or idealism or anything else. This is just about, I'm so witty. These people are just so witty, they can hardly stand themselves. So this is Rococo. Rococo is very frivolous. See how all of these little lacy marks that they put on the canvas, they're all just really Decadent, they're decorative. What's the style? Can you see a parallel between these two, other than she's naked with a big butt? Can you see any parallels between those two styles? Cool colors. The cool colors, so the palette is similar. The realism is similar. It's pristine. It's more simplified. See how busy this is in comparison and how much more decorative and lacy and frilly it is? These are very sharp lines, higher realism. These are kind of cool in comparison. So what, what style is this? Because they were, they were reacting to this. They were ready for revolution. So it's political. Nobody? Neoclassical. Neoclassical. And neoclassical means new Greek. Neoclassical. Neoclassical is really idealistic, but the thrust of the work is political. As is the thrust of this work. This, these two are both concurrent at the same time. You've got some artists who like this very cool, very clean, pristine style, and some artists who like this highly emotional style. But this emotion is serious as a heart attack. It's way different than what you see in Rococo. So what style is that? It's romantic. Romantic. Romanticism. So romanticism is about the human cause. It's about human emotion. I, I'm starting to really worry. I mean, I'm discouraged enough just to like send you all home right now. Um, this usually makes a difference of 30 to 35 points, this review, but you all need to step up. I mean, I'm so shocked that there are only one or two of you that know what the fuck I'm talking about. I, this is just shattering. Do you actually not know it? Because I'm, I'm wondering if I, I'm really, really concerned right now. And I mean, in some aspects of this class, you guys have done amazingly well, and I, I have been really pleased with you, but do you know what I'm talking about right now? Do you really not know the answer? Was it just not stressed enough? You're not bad children. I mean, you can tell me, because if I screwed up, something to right the right the wrong. Do you do you not know? Do you know some of it? Because this is this is as close to the test as you're gonna get. I mean this is the actual test that I'm giving you right now in a different form. Do you think you're gonna do all right on this test? One or two of you do? Yes? So I'm probably the wrong person to speak because I missed the day. I remember a lot of the terms, but uh, I mean, we went over a lot of these 
you know, like one, right? One presentation. And then we have a lot of days where we're doing like art projects, like blind projects, the chalk so projects. So it was like mixing those two was too much? Well, if this is art history and these are super important concepts for us to get, it seems like more of the time should be spent, you know, focusing on those okay. as opposed to doing art. But I don't, I'm not a teacher and I don't know what the curriculum is. My hope was that doing those, except for the chalk, which was probably for the school more than anything, because that's like the day that other people come to the school and see the possibility. But my hope was that doing those projects, like doing the drawing in your drawing, um, in your sketchbook, and, and doing that sort of thing would make you more sensitive to like how this is constructed and what's going on here. So I, I really want to know because if I have to change my approach I will yeah and then also for homework like the sketchbook if we instead were like uh, writing homework or answering questions about you know these eras and about these different art styles as opposed to drawing arbitrary sketches from the book we would probably get a better grasp of you know what's going on okay because these do seem like more complex concepts than we had in the first half of the class. Okay. It, well, and it is. You're supposed to build on the first half to get to the last half. So if it's if too complex, then I will um, I will redo my my approach for the summer. So you think you need more written assignments? In the class? What? Uh, yeah. I, Personally, I mean, maybe it helps you guys to do a sketchbook, but for me, to, okay. under, to understand yeah, these terms. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Uh, for me, it was more where it, at the starting, where it's like you can kind of answer it, but you, I just kind of forgot the, the basics, where it's like it's there, but not, not completely, if that makes sense. Okay, so you need it repeated? Uh, yeah. yeah.
So this is more intellectual and this is more emotional. I need you to know the styles. When I ask you, it will have the same answers for this, this, and this, and maybe another one. And it will be the answer to this one is either the Rococo or it will be decadent, sexualized, and decorative. If it's this one, the answer will be neoclassical or they'll be very pristine, cool colors, and politically oriented. This one is very passionate, uh, political, warm colors, or romanticism. So I will either go for it, any of these for from the characteristics listed, same ones, you'll have, they're sort of like you draw a line from one to the other, but there'll be three separate questions because I want you to see these paintings. <coughs> So the next phase, see this is more like what you see in Renaissance times only it's updated or this is actually a Raphael piece that he had redone. And it's an allegory. It's not about what, what painting used to be about. When you look at this, what's different about this? How could getting a camera and being able to take these black and white photographs, make a painting like this. Is this more about capturing a realistic image or is it more about the, the impression you get when you see something? I mean, you can still see the realism in it, but it is, it's an impression. That's why they call it impressionism. And so, what is Impressionism about? Impressionism is about ocular science, so it's scientific. Because all of the artists are studying the way that information enters the eye and is processed by the brain. And it's cerebral, meaning they'll tell these stories that were told over and over again about artistic inspiration, about relationships between persons, about the way that we see the world. So they're telling a story in a different way. And the iconography in these ends up being common everyday icons because before, if a painter was doing uh, something realistic, they would do a nobleman and his estate, or they would do a picture of someone, um, a picture of someone who is getting married, and they want to want to show a portrait of them. But they were all about either religion, kings and queens, or very wealthy people. Now, the iconography shifts to common people. So this is Impressionism. This is about having common, everyday iconography. It is about having ocular science as part of the background of it. And it is about having um, cerebral or ideological kinds of things happening in it, such as this one, talking about artistic inspiration. Who is this? Cezanne. Cezanne is considered the father of modern art. What is it about Cezanne's work that makes him so important? Yes, exactly, very good. The brush strokes in Cezanne's work foreshadow cubism. And that is one of the first major abstract art movements. So these brush strokes foreshadow cubism. That's gonna be on the test, no matter what. 
what are the three artists, Cezanne was a post-impressionist, you know, three artists who were really influential in what happened, what would go on to happen in the 20th century, and what were their names? Picasso. Picasso is 20th century. This is the, the 19th. Huh? Three artists of the post-impressionistic period, Cezanne is one, Van Gogh, Gauguin, Gauguin, very good. Gauguin because of color, Van Gogh because of the structure, everything's moving around, and Cezanne because of those cross-hatching brush strokes, so the fractured picture plane. So this one, you might have Brush strokes foreshadow cubism, that's one answer. Another answer that you might have is that uh, this is Cezanne, who is considered the father of modern art. I don't think I'll ask the father of modern art part. Or you may need to know that he is one of the post-impressionists. And a written question might be, who are the three post-impressionistic artists covered in our work? And they are, Gauguin, Cezanne, Van Gogh. Got it? <coughs> We're traveling into the 20th century, and all of a sudden, everything, see, these are abstract, meaning that the colors are juicier, they're more fuzzy, they're more impressionistic, but the, you can still tell that's a mountain, that's the ocean, that's a bridge, you can still tell. These are getting much more abstract. Everything is compressed. What style is this? Who is the artist? This is really important. You have to know this. This is Fauvism or Fauvism. F-A-U-V-I-S-M. What's fake? Fauvism means wild beast and it means fake. What's fake? The color, absolutely. So this artist uses arbitrary color. What is his name? Matisse. <coughs> so Matisse, he uses arbitrary color. This is one of the first of the 20th century. And see how flat it looks, how he compressed the space? That's really important because the more compressed Face, the more abstract it is, and the more abstract it is, the more intellectual it becomes. This is a big deal in the 20th century. Whose is this? Picasso. Picasso, what's the style? Cubism. Cubism. And what, who are the two, what are the two main, um, what are the two main influences? African art. African art? Cezanne. Cezanne and African art. So those brush strokes foreshadowing cubism, that's because Picasso was looking at Cezanne and said, oh, you know what, when you, when you paint it like that, it's almost like these little cross-hatched brush strokes have different, they're like different time periods during the day. It fractures the whole thing. It breaks, it breaks up the image. So the fractured nature of it is Cezanne and these, are, and the structure of the bodies, the way they are, the angular nature of the structure is African art. So if you see this, you need to know Picasso, you need to know African art and Cezanne as the two influences, and, or you need to know Cubism as the style name. So there are three questions associated with this What style is this like? Cubism. And this is the first one of Duchamp, but this is Duchamp's later work. What is the movement called? Dada. 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 D A D A, like your dad. Dada. This is flipped upside down. It's a urinal flipped upside down, stuck in the museum. What is he critiquing? Because this is, Dada is all about protest and social critique. Virgin Mary. <coughs> yeah. Well, it, 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 it refers back to the Virgin Mary, 
but it's not really the Virgin Mary that he is critiquing. It's the culture. He is culture, language, and the art world. Because he's like sticking it in a museum. Culture, language, art world. Language is because this arm mutt or mutter isn't because he is putting word puns in there. suddenly be at school. I mean, it, so things are juxtaposed that aren't normally. So this is about subjectivity. Again, we were talking earlier about subjectivity. This is about everything being really subjective. If I think I'm having a conversation with you and I think this is what's understood from this conversation, you might be having a totally different conversation in your head. <coughs> So, surrealism. What's the other surrealistic picture you might have to watch out for? Screen. Huh? The screen. Uh, the screen is expressionistic. Surrealism is cooler. Surrealism is a Parisian thing. This is the one with the clock. Yep, the melting watches. The melting watches with Dolly. So, these are surrealistic. This, like the screen, is expressionistic, and you can tell that it comes from a different part of the globe. So when you look at these, the French are a little bit verbose, but very witty, and they're more lighthearted. You look at the you look at the difference in culture. This is a serious as a heart attack culture. This is Czechoslovakia. People <coughs> were starving. People were taken over by the Soviet Union. Now, I mean, there was a lot going on here. This is expressionism, and the other one that you'll need to watch for, either this one or the screen. Both of those are expressionism. Did you have your hand up, or did you just? Mm -hmm. Okay, so expressionism, sometimes called German expressionism, but it, I'm not using that because it's not all German. It's a lot of Eastern European, some Russian, some Scandinavian. So just expressionism was mostly happening outside of Paris. I mean, so when you're in Paris or when you're in France, the art is totally different. Style. Drip painting. It is a drip painting. You'll have to know that for sure. This is 100% <coughs> on the test. Abstract expressionism and drip painting. Those are the two things you need to know. What does this this and that and so on have that these don't have. Iconography. Iconography, very good. So, so the icons completely disappear. When the icons disappear, everything is much headier. 
It's much more, you have to think your way through this. Now this is very off-putting. You looked at it and it's blocking your entrance into it. So this is, this is like brambles or something. It's very, very awkward. If you see this, you need to know drip painting and abstract <coughs> expression in this. What is this one? Abstract color field. It's abstract expressionism just like this because neither one of them have the iconography. These are both about the paint, but the feel is totally different and this is called a color field painting. So this actually invites you in, this actually pushes you out. And they have a whole different way of working. So what's back? Pop art. That's pop art, that's very good. That is pop art and what's back? icons. The icons are back. Because before, if you see this, there's no icon to hang on to, so you can't figure out what it means by looking at the icon and then figuring out what the icon means in relation to it. <coughs> These are totally without icons. So this, you're, you're seeing, oh, well, you know what? These are really like heightened, ugly colors. I mean, this is just like electric and it goes into nothing, but you start with the icon, whether it's soup cans, whether it's Jackie Kennedy or Marilyn Monroe, anytime you have pop art, you start with the icon. So that may be a question. You start with the iconography in order to understand the work. This is also telling you what's wrong with the culture, just like that just like this one was telling you what was wrong with the culture. These are both protests in different ways. Who's more aggressive about telling me that the culture is going to hell? Huh? I think so. Yeah. There is no right answer to what I just asked you. It's more about your read on it. Last slide. What's the style? Postmodern. What does that mean? What does post mean? After. After. After modernism. This was a bunch of artists being absolutely fed up with the art world. And so they wanted art that everybody could look at, everybody could participate in. They wanted artwork that really made a difference for everybody that looked at it. This is person here. Can you imagine? I would love to go out there. I wonder what it looks like right now. And so, so they want to do non-traditional ways of being. So you remember <coughs> the Van House painting, or Van House photograph that Maplethorpe took where he's holding the king, right? And then you remember, I think it's Guillermo Gomez Pena, uh, who is doing, who did the same thing, only in a totally different way, which one has more humor. Yeah, the last one does because if that's that's what the, this has more humor. This has more in it that relates to the human experience than the other does. The other is over intellectualized. So postmodern means a new way of relating to the audience. The audience is more important. Okay, now are there any slides that we need to go back to or anything that you don't understand? <coughs> which is which from either side. So you're going to have to match those up. 
with those four spikes. So if you know that number one is Egyptian, or A is Egyptian, B is Greek, C is Christian or Byzantine, and D is Roman, then you will be able to figure those out. Is that all one question, or are there four separate questions? There are four separate questions. That's 20 points right there. So just remember, and they're, they're fairly, uh, they separate themselves out easily from one another. I mean, I think that you can tell by looking at them which is which. Uh, they're not going to have pictures with them necessarily. So there will just be words on that question. It'll be one slide, but it'll be four different questions. <coughs> and then, Janine, you said that, did you need to know any more about uh, postmodernism? Okay, postmodernism is, if I ask you another question about postmodernism, the characteristics would be uh, non-traditional materials, would be sense of humor, or a uh, new way of looking at things. Because the rap bridges were also postmodern. Um, the, the spiral jetty was postmodern. It was just a new way of looking at the same environment. Any others? Okay. So you are done. Anybody that has stuff to show me, come on up.